action. Let's find the speed of the bullet that comes out of this gun when I shoot it. It's really just a BB gun. But let's find the speed of the BB. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to aim, pull, fire, the bullet will come flying out of the gun, it will hit the clay, it will embed itself in this clay blob, and the momentum that's transferred will then cause the clay blob to swing upward. We will measure that angle, and simply by knowing the angle that this thing goes at, we'll be able to find the speed of the bullet coming out of this gun. Let's do the demonstration, and we'll use a high-speed camera, and then we'll go through the explanation. Action. Let's now do the calculation to find the speed of the speeding bullet. Here's what just happened. I'm going to break it up into three steps. First step was the shooting of the bullet, so the clay blob's not moving, just sitting there. And we have the speeding BB coming at it. And um, then in the second situation, it's immediately after the collision. So the bullet is inside the clay blob, and the two of them have this initial speed, V2. In the third step here, the kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy. That is, the clay blob with the bullet embedded inside of it is, swings up to its highest point, and we measured this angle. We measured it, as you just saw, to be 25 degrees. And at its highest point, its speed is zero. It doesn't have any kinetic energy. So kinetic energy here, potential there. Now you might ask yourself, well, why can't I just take the kinetic energy of this guy, set it equal to the potential energy of that guy, work backwards, find the speed of the speeding bullet? That doesn't work because between here and here, energy is not conserved. The, well, it's conserved, of course, in the universe, but it's not conserved in the bullet plus clay pendulum system. Some of the energy leaves this system in the form of heat, noise, etc., out into the atmosphere. So between these two steps, we need to use momentum conservation. And between these two guys, well here, we can clearly use energy conservation. It's just a pendulum swinging upwards. 
Great. So we're going to work backwards. We're going to first use this angle to find the height h, and then we will find v2 using energy conservation, and then using momentum conservation, we'll find the speed of the boat. So let me redraw this triangle here so we can see what h is equal to here. So at its high point, it swings up to 25 degrees. We know that the pendulum is taking an arc motion like as seen here. And therefore, this is our height h that we're interested in. And if I draw a line directly across, I make a right triangle. And I know that the length of the string, let's call it a length L, that's L. This is also L, because it's the same string, just swinging down here. And therefore, this is L minus H. That is the distance from here to there. So now I have a triangle right triangle, that is, and I can set uh, cosine 25 degrees. Cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is just this L minus H. The hypotenuse is L. And if I multiply both sides by L, these guys cancel. And then I will also add, oops, I will add h to both sides. Uh, sorry. Let me subtract an L cosine of 25 degrees and, and subtract an L cosine of 25 degrees. And I'll add an H. And what happens is, well, these guys cancel here. This guy cancels with that guy. And I'm simply left with H equals L minus L cosine 25 degrees. Now all I need to do is measure the length. So let's do that. And from the center of mass of the pendulum to the point where it's applied, that's our length, and that's 27 centimeters. Well, if I plug in, 27 centimeters minus 27 centimeters cosine of 25 degrees 0 0.906 thereabouts and doing this I get 2.5 centimeters which is equal to 0 0.25 oops 0, .0 two, five meters. Great. So now we know H. We can use energy conservation to figure out, and let's, let's remember our H value, H is 0 0.025 meters. And now I can use energy conservation, E initial equals E final. Well, initially it had kinetic energy. One half m plus m, and I'm calling that v2 squared, is equal to the potential energy that it has here, and that's m plus m gh. Excellent. The uh, these guys cancel on both sides. I divide both sides by m plus m, and then multiply both sides by two. And I get a V2 squared is equal to 2 GH, or V2 square root of 2 GH. And if I plug in my numbers, I plug in for H, plug in the value for the acceleration of gravity, I get a speed of 0 0.7 meters per second. Very good. So now I know. V2 is equal to 0 0.7 meters per second. 
Now I just use momentum conservation between this step and that step to find the speed of the bullet. So the initial momentum equals the final momentum. In other words, the momentum here in situation one equals the momentum here in situation two. Well, this guy is not moving, so he has zero momentum here. This guy contributes momentum. And then in the final situation here, I have a combined object, m plus m, and that's equal to v2. Now the masses of the, the bullet and the clay blob were previously measured. The mass of the bullet is half a gram, so that's 0 0.5 grams times v. And then the mass of the clay blob is 100 grams. So 100 plus 0.5, that's 100 5 grams times V2. Oops, and we know what V2 is. It's 0 0.7 meters per second. The, uh, all I have to do now is divide both sides by the 0 0.5 grams. And when I do that, I get an answer of V equals 141 meters per second. So now we know the speed of the speeding bullet is 141 meters per second. Excellent.